The Jim Green Baobab boot goes up against the likes of Red Wing with their first heritage boot. But can they pull it off? Welcome, I'm Carl Murawski. This is the channel that helps you own better, look better, and live better. Now, I wanna start off this video by telling you about my own biases. Jim Green did provide this pair of boots for review. I also really like the brand. I even met Garrett uh, when he was over here from South Africa. Yeah, so today I have the privilege of sharing a few beers with Carl. I just like the brand and I wanna see them succeed. However, I'm gonna do my best to remain impartial and give you the, the straight ahead scoop, my experience wearing these things so that you can make the best decision for yourself. This boot's named the Baobab because back in Southern Africa, the Baobab boot is um, a very well-known tree. They can live for uh, thousands of years. And the reason we named it Baobab was, this, was to celebrate our 30 years of boot making history. Now the Jim Green Baobab is a bit of a mutt, being a combination of their flagship Razorback, which in my opinion is still the best value work boot available today, and the African Ranger that I reviewed last year. The one piece vamp and full leather lining of the Razorback combined with the lacing reinforcement of the African Ranger, come together to create a unique yet familiar member of the Jim Green family. Jim Green then added a dash of heritage boot quality with a veg tan leather lasting board and an all new sole, which combines wedge comfort with lugged traction. And then the biggest change on this boot was, that was the outsole. So what we've done here is we've combined a, a mini lug. So we took our lug sole, turned it down a little bit, and what we did is combine that with a a layer of EVA. And then just to top this boot all off is that there's a leather lasting board. So what we did here is that we listened to what our customers ha have had to say. They wanted a boot that they could wear to the office. While at the same time, we kept it in our, our standard Jim Green, Jim Green touch. The last is a bit different as well. While people like me with wide feet appreciate the signature Jim Green fit, Others felt it was too spacious in the toe box. The Baobab would be considered a wide boot by most standards, but by Jim Green standards, it's narrowed down quite a bit. We then uh, tied this boot all together with a, with a new last, which as I was explaining to Carl, is still wide fitting, but it is a bit more uh, pointed. As one customer ex explained in the review, it is the shape of an almond. All the good stuff is still here. 360 degree double row stitch down construction, South African components, and a gusseted tongue which tucks in neatly beneath the lacing reinforcement. You may notice the absence of Jim Green's logo which was featured very prominently on previous models. The decision to reduce branding for a cleaner look is all part of the Baobab objective, to create a South African heritage boot. One of the things we have to keep in mind is that Jim Green faces a unique challenge in South Africa, and that's balancing cost and quality. So I have some facts and figures here for you. The median annual income in South Africa is the equivalent of just $17,000 in U.S. And for context, here in the U.S., the median household income is double that, just about at 31000 Here in New England, where I live, the annual median income is $77,000. So making boots that people can actually use in their community is Jim Green's top priority. And I always find it inspiring that they're able to balance those two things so well. And just take a look at Jim Green's conservation efforts. They're definitely worth a look. So in light of that, it's understandable why some high-end components are absent in the Jim Green Baobab, like a leather heel counter and toe stiffener. Would I like to see those things in their boots? Absolutely. Would the cost be justified to the people who they're trying to serve? No. The leather is typical of Jim Green, being more about function than aesthetics. No crazy grain or hot stuffed pull up here. The Houston Brown is 2.2 millimeters, which is about five and a half ounces, full grain leather lined with 1.6 millimeters or four ounce calf leather. But as we saw in the stitch down patina Thunderdome, Jim Green's leather ages beautifully, taking home fifth place in the work category. Their leather tends to develop a beautiful sheen and tons of character as you wear them, a look that can only be earned not bought. And if you're interested in seeing the inside of the Jim Green Baobab or how it's made, they've actually already done a video on the Jim Green channel and I'll link to that below. Now I received these boots back in the spring 
and I have been wearing them on and off the job site regularly since then. So a few months of actual wear on these things. And the thing that I noticed the most immediately was the sole. When you put these things on, that sole is a wonderful combination of traction because they have lugs in the bottom, but also the benefits of a wedge. Now, one of the most common questions that I get is, what should I wear when I'm standing on concrete all day? To which my answer is always, a wedge sole, because a wedge sole disperses all of your weight across that surface. So instead of having a, a heel and a, and a toe, it's all across your foot, which is actually much more comfortable. They're also a little bit softer, which saves your knees. And believe me, you're gonna thank me when you get to be my age. This Jim Green sole is a wonderful combination of both, having both the traction of a lugged sole and the uh, shock absorption and comfort of a wedge sole. Now. Yeah, okay, I would love to see a polished leather stacked heel, maybe a really cool half sole in the front, but that's not what Jim Green does. And what I'm looking for is sort of my American taste in a South African boot, but what I actually want is Jim Green boots. So I really love the fact that they do things their own way. And in my opinion, this is just a perfect combination of both worlds. Break-in for these was basically non-existent. I threw them on and was able to wear them all day. Now, one of the things that this has that I really like is the lining is sort of a rough out, whereas some linings on some boots, like my White's Bounty Hunters, are actually smooth. Now, a lot of times that doesn't really help lock your foot in place, but this really does. So once you get your foot in there, the sock against that, that uh, rough out, it creates a friction which absolutely locks your foot in place. That's actually something that I kind of wish more companies would do, at least just in the heel counter here. Really effective. Now, one of the other things that might make a difference to you is the original Razorbacks. They had a wide toe box, but it was also kind of short. Now, this never bothered me, but until I started reading some other reviews and hearing from other people who have worn them, some people don't like that. This does have a taller toe box, so you have a little bit more height in it. And I think that in general, this profile right here with this toe box is actually gonna be preferable to a lot of people. Now, the one downside, or maybe just the one thing that kind of threw me about these, more than once, I would put them on and think that I might have had my boots on the wrong feet because on the medial side of the boot, so the inside of the boot, there's not much of a cut in right here. So oftentimes, this is called the waist, and so it cuts back in here and then back out for the heel. This doesn't have much of one at all. It's, it's, it's there, but it's not very prominent. And so there were times where I'm looking at it and I'm going, shoot, do I have my boots on the wrong feet? They weren't. But this is one of those things that I think I'm kind of spoiled with some of this bespoke footwear, which has a very drastic cut in and then back out. It's a look that I really like. However, it doesn't affect the functionality of them at all. So at $229, the Baobab is the most expensive boot in the Jim Green range, but it's still far less expensive than the likes of Red Wing or Courtney or Danner making it a bargain. And that's always been the thing with Jim Green is that they've given you a lot of boot for the money. And I even saw something today where somebody referred to the Jim Green group as like the Jim Green cult. People who buy these tend to be able to afford more of them, so they'll collect all of them. They'll get a pair of the Valies, they'll get a pair of the uh, African Rangers, a Razorback or two, and now the Baobab, because they are affordable enough and durable enough that you can actually build up a little collection if you want to. To me, Jim Green has always been a refreshing take on boots. They do things their way, unapologetically South African. They give back to their community. I mean, just go and watch some of their YouTube videos. These guys are almost impossible not to like, which makes me root for them even more. So I don't know if I've done a good job at being unbiased in this, but I think that if you were to even search around on the web and talk to people who have Jim Greens, you won't find much more than like stellar, glowing reviews. People love them, and for good reason. I find myself reaching for my original Razorbacks plenty often, even though that I have boots that are, are multiple times more expensive. There's just something about them. They have like a character, a uniqueness to them that I find really interesting and honestly endearing. So go and pick up yourself a pair of Jim Green Baobabs. I can guarantee that you won't regret it. They're they're fantastic. And if you wanna see more about Jim Green, I put all the videos that I've ever done on them in one playlist for you. In that playlist is, uh, let's, see, let's see, the African Ranger, there's a pair of Razorbacks, there is the Valies, and of course, these right here. And I think I even have like an extended review or two in there. So if you wanna you know, di dive a little bit deeper, you absolutely can. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.
And cheers to that. <laughs> cheers.